Zen 3 versus Zen 4. What is the difference? What's up guys, welcome back to another Geek, Geek video. AMD has recently revealed their new 7000 series of CPUs. And in this video, I'll be going over the differences between Z3 and Z4. Now, let's begin. Now for the socket difference. All the past generations of AMD CPUs have all been on PGA sockets. Besides this rando of a CPU called the Opatron, which was made in like 2007. With AM5, AMD is switching over from PGA to LGA 1718. That means there'll be 1,718 pads on the CPU. Oh, kinda cool. Unlike Intel 12th gen CPUs that support DDR4 and DDR5, AM5 CPUs will only support DDR5. So all you DDR4 users out there, get ready to pay twice the price of DDR5. For AM5, there'll be four different types of chipsets. X670, X670E, B650 and B650E. There's no difference between the E and the and the no, no E models yet, as we don't know of yet. <laughs> I'll explain the difference between the X and B series of motherboards. X670 and, and X670E will support PCIe 5.0. B650 and B650E will support PCIe 4.0 lanes, but still have the PCIe 5.0 for NVMe drives. And keep in mind, early PCIe 5.0 NVMe SSDs can hit a whopping 13 gigabytes per second. I mean, that's great for your content creators out there. Finally, AMD CPUs are finally coming with integrated graphics. And no, this isn't for gaming. It can be an absolute pain when your PC isn't working or when my PC isn't working when I build it and I need to diagnose it, maybe something's wrong, maybe I didn't set up something right. And it is gonna, it's a huge pain for me. So this is a huge help for you guys and me who are building or maybe fixing their own PCs. Now onto performance. AMD has told us that their CPUs will have a roughly eight to 10% IPC increase. Its clock speed is also roughly 12% faster than the previous Zen 3 chip from 4.9 to 5.5 gigahertz. So we can easily see up to a 20% increase in single thread performance. AMD, however, clarified this by saying that their single thread performance is roughly 15% faster. But still, that's still a very big increase in single thread performance. But what does all this mean? A lot of single threaded applications will benefit greatly from the single thread performance increase that the CPU has. And if you've kept up with my last videos, that includes stop turning. Now for multi threaded performance. The multi-core gains that we saw on the new Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs have been much greater than the single threaded performance gains. The previous 16 core chip, the Ryzen 9 5950X, had an all core boost of around 4 gigahertz. The new 7950X, I'm guessing they're gonna call it, is gonna have a all core boost of 5 gigahertz. That's over a 25% increase in clock speed. And with the roughly 9% gains that we see in IPC, we could easily be seeing 34% gains in multi threaded performance. AMD did their own benchmark at Computex that shows this, the new 7000 series chip completely annihilating the Intel 12th gen. But who cares about Blender benchmarks? What does this mean for you people? For you video editors out there, I'm happy to say that you can expect faster rendering times, faster editing times, and for you animators out there, a more smooth experience. Now for cache, just like the 5800X 3D, the later models of Zen 4 will include 3D cache. What is 3D cache though? AMD has found an innovative way to store more cache while still keeping the same area. When storing cache, it takes up physical space in the die. So when stacking cache together, you can keep the same four factor while still increasing the amount of cache you have in your CPU. This was shown in the new 5800X 3D as the extra cache increased performance in games greatly, up to 15%. Good for you gamers out there. But keep in mind, AMD's initial Zen 4 chips won't come with 3D cache, but on AMD's roadmap, the later ones will. Now onto power consumption. One second, I have to read this out loud. Looking at Zen 4, it achieves a 25% more performance per watt, but at the same time has a 35% overall improvement. You might notice that in order to get that 10% increase in performance, the wattage has to go up. So there will be a slight power consumption increase, 
but this shouldn't be this shouldn't be much of an issue for you users out there. In addition to the architectural improvements I've been talking about, the new generation of AMD CPUs will be on a 5 nanometer process node rather than the 7 nanometer process node that the previous generation is on. All right, I mean, that, that wraps up my thoughts. But <laughs> one more thing, the CPU looks absolutely sick. I mean, look at this thing. Tell me it doesn't look crazy. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. And once the CPU comes out, maybe you guys let me know if you want me to do some benchmarks on the CPU. I'll be happy to do that. Anyways, thank you for watching. See you next time.